You're describing. Go back up here. You're describing your relationship with who? Go see the last word I mentioned. Allah. Your relationship with the Almighty is or should be surrendered to Him, submitting to His terms, conditions, or commandments, and being in total obedience to what He has ordained for people to do. And to do it in sincerity, not to show off, not because somebody is watching, because you know you need to do it. And then finally, to do so in total and complete peace. It's not something new. It's a way of life described for us in the Quran, in the New Testament, in the Psalms of David, and in the books of Moses. Clearly, it's to do what God has ordered you to do. Follow the commandments. Worship Him alone, without any partners. Give up this life the desires, the lusts, greed, passions, sacrifice that to follow His will. The Ten Commandments mentioned twice in the Old Testament and referred to throughout the Bible are beautiful for Muslims as well. They're very clear. And someone in Islam should know these commandments are for us too because they're mentioned in the Quran as well. First commandment, La ilaha illallah. By the way, you can talk. This is not Juma Khutbah. No, you can answer me, no problem. So I say something and ask you a question, you can say it. It's okay. Alhamdulillah. First commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods beside me. Second commandment, Thou shalt not make unto me any graven image. God's speaking in the first person when he says me. That doesn't mean Moses is asking people to worship him. That we will not take God's name in vain. Muslims are very, very keen about never taking Allah's names in vain. Even we don't jokingly call somebody by God's names. In fact, when we name our children, we call them the servant of Allah, Abdullah. The servant of the most merciful, Abdullah Rahim. And the servant of the, the all patient, Abdul Sabur. So we use these terms because there's so much respect for his names. The next commandment says to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Sabbath means seven, not one. Not the seventh day of the week. Hmm. We'll leave that for a discussion another time. Think about it. The next commandment, the fifth commandment says, and is the first thing that leaves the subject of worship of God, says, Thou shalt honor thy mother and thy father. And Islam says, after Allah and his messenger, the first rites go to your mother, and then your mother, and then your mother, and then your father. Yes? something new. The next commandment, thou shalt not kill. Islam has that. I think it's in Surah al Mayada, chapter 5, maybe verse 36. It's in that area. Whoever kills an innocent person, it's as though they killed the whole of humanity. But whoever saves a life, it's as though they saved all of humanity. This is more or less translation of English. Next one, that shall not bear false witness. No lying. Sadida. O you who believe, speak the truth. Again, same thing. That shall not commit adultery. Zina. Is it forbidden in Islam? How many pages do you need with the subject of Zim? No adultery. In fact, there is no marital relationships without marriage. No 
Nothing. No boyfriend, no boyfriend. Just get married. And even after you get married, no hanky panky. True? Wow. Pretty familiar, isn't it? But it doesn't stop there. The Bible goes on to say that you will not have envy for your neighbor's ass, meaning his donkey. I'm quoting to you from the Catholic Bible. It's a little different than the Protestant Bible. And the next one it says you will not have envy for his wife. Now the Protestant Bible gives the woman a little bit higher status and lets the woman be ahead of the donkey. I don't know why. But in Islam we have real clear that Uga Hasid means Uga Hasid. I'm seeking refuge with the law from the envier when he does envy. So it's also forbidden in Islam. We didn't mention anything about donkeys and wives, but it's the same thing. Make sense? I've got one more word now, I'm ready to tell the story. The next word is, listen. Now again, I'm from Texas, so down there we said, Oh, I'm all Muslims. But, you know, Muslims, we don't like that too much because it's actually somebody playing with Arabic to make it sound like Mazdoom. Mazdoom is people who do wrong things, bad things. Mm. We don't want them to say that. Muslim, say no, no. Hello? I can hear you breathing. Say no. Ah, thank you. No. Islam. Muslim. It comes from the word Islam. Whoever does an action, and you use an Arabic language, you put mu in front of it, in front of the verb, in most cases, and you find the one who's doing it. For instance, our word safari in the English language comes from the Arabia, safar, to travel. Whoever travels is a musafir. And believe me, sometimes when I'm traveling, that's effort. But that's in the story. Another word in Arabic, sully. When somebody is doing their worship, standing, bowing, prostrating, that's sully. The musalim, those who do this. Now, when you put mu in front of sully, musalli, you see how it works. Another one, have you heard this? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That's called the Adon. And when you do it, you become the new Adon. Right? Did I get it right? Don't let me get mixed up here now. So if I want to do what God wants me to do, if I want to surrender to Him and submit to Him, Obeying his commandments in sincerity and peace. What am I? Muslim. In English, we don't have a word for it. We have to put all that together and say what I said. But in Arabic, Muslim. You believe in the one God of Abraham? Allah. You want to do what he wants you to do? You know he's serious? You're trying your best? When you're a Muslim, what do you know to do? And it's on the day of judgment that the ultimate judge, al happen will decide who the real believers are, who the real Muslims are, not me. There's a final word. Doom. I didn't used to do this, but I found that it's necessary to mention this because of the mistranslation to the English language in Pictal and Yusuf Ali's translations. They use the word religion. English doesn't have a word to handle the word deen. Religion is really close. It conveys a meaning, so we grab it and we go with it, but unfortunately, it is not all-encompassing. 
The translators of the Bible actually come out with a word a little bit closer to the meaning when they translated what was in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. The first book to follow the Gospels is Paul's book, Acts of the Apostles. In here it tells you that Paul persecuted even unto death the followers of Jesus. But he doesn't call them the followers of Jesus. He calls them the people of the way. And they use the capital W to signify that this was the proper noun. And you capitalize proper nouns with a big W. Just like they did with the big G for God. Right? Way. People of the way. Ahodim is the reference he was talking about. How many Muslims in here would like to be known as Ahodim? Please raise your hand. Ahodim. Oh, you don't want to follow the deen of Islam? In the deen of Allah, in Islam? How can you be a Muslim if you don't follow the deen? Let me try that again. How many Muslims would like to be Ahodim? Hello? Who made up for it? Put two hands this time. Good. I'm only saying it because it's important for the non-Muslim to realize what we're talking about. Our book, the Quran, tells us, and in no uncertain terms, by the way, this word being is used over and over and over, maybe more than the word Islam itself in the Quran. In the in the law of Islam. Wa man Islam fala وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ وَخَاسِمِينَ أَوْ يَعْمَوْ أَكْمَوْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ Yes or no? At the end of that one, وَوَرِي كُلْ لَكُمْ إِسْلَانَ دِينَ Again, the deen. And قُلْ يَا يُوْهَا الْكَافِرُونَ How does it end? لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَوَرِي الدِّينَ How many times do you think that word is in there? And if you keep saying religion, 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 you know what the problem is going to be? In some cases, it won't make any sense. How do you tell an atheist, Mulhid, Rakum Deen Kum Wali He doesn't have any religion, but he has a Deen, doesn't he? To you, your way. To me, my way. Make sense? Well, if it didn't, go talk to scholars, because I asked them, they said, use the word brother. And then when I found it, uh, Paul's using the same expression makes sense to me. People of the way. The people of Jesus' time were called people of the way. They were never called Christians. The Bible said they were never called Christians until after Paul goes to Antioch. Because Paul said that himself. They were never called Christians until after Antioch. Prior to that, they were called Ahudim, people of the way. Did Muhammad bring something new? The Quran says no. The Quran clearly tells us in chapter 42, real clear, that this is the Dina, Dean, way, that was with Abraham. And it's the Dean for you, meaning Muhammad Sallallahu and the Dean of Moses and Jesus, Noah, are mentioned in this verse. Read it. It's not new. And Allah says in Surah Tabayna, وَمَا أُمُرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ وَنَفْعَى وَيُكِمُوا السَّلَاةَ وَيُكِمُوا الزِّكَاءَ وَذَلَكَ دِينَ كَيْمَا How many times are you going to hear the word before you go, Oh, wait a minute, I got it. دِينَ أَحُلْ دِينَ Oh, translation, sorry. The people of the book, the Jews and Christians, were not ordered anything more than this, and Allah tells you, to be on the doom. He said, this is what they were ordered, to worship God alone without any partners. Keep religion clean, pure for Him. Establish regular salah. Worship, don't call it prayer, okay? They don't have a word for salah. Establish this ritualistic worship, salah. Pay the zakat, which means charity. You have to give charity. You have to give charity. You have to give charity. Are you not a Muslim? Allah said that in the Quran. 
clearly you're not guided by Quran until you give of the things that Allah gives you. First verses in Surah Baqarah. And Allah said, 